Hi Prescott, welcome to Prescott E-News Prescott Talks. I'm your host Glenn Martin and we are here in the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I like to look at it, you know, a lot of people, if you can recall when you were kids, you couldn't sleep the night before. For me, being a Southern California guy, it was going to Disneyland or going to Knott's Berry Farm. Well, I had one of those nights last night because I'm at Gunsight. You're back and, at Gunsight. I'm back at Gunsight, <laughs> absolutely. And I am the guest of the one and only Ken Campbell, the CEO of Gunsight. Thank you, Ken, for oh, bringing us back out. Good to have you back. You know, we love coming out here and talking with you and, and seeing you. and enjoying the freedom that we have here in Arizona. That's, uh, you know, we started a big uh, carbine class mm -hmm. uh, this morning, and that's one of my, always my greetings to some of the new students, not to where they're from. Yeah. I'll say, now, who's from California? And a couple will raise their hand. I'll say, welcome to free America. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, today we've been invited to go to a special place. Maybe you can. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, we're going to go over and visit Jeff and Janelle Cooper's home. It's called The Sconce. Uh, and uh, a, when Jeff and Janelle were alive, uh, the house belonged to Gunsight, but we, uh, they, they lived there in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Well, sadly, Mrs. Cooper passed just a little over a year ago, and now the, the sconce is a museum. Uh, we house all the memorabilia from the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation. The uh, animal heads, the knife collection, the gun collection, and letters, and, and so on. We house them there, and, and then we tour students through. So you're mm -hmm. going to get a personal tour. Well, we appreciate it, and this is going to be really neat for a lot of the folks who might not be in Arizona who want to come and see what this is all about. We are privileged and we are honored to be able well, to go through this, Ken. We're happy to take you through it. And we thank you so much. Hey, let's go. Let's do it. All right, we're on our way. Double 250 pistol class was last week and and uh, Lindy mm -hmm. and Christy, two of the daughters, uh, came up and uh, they did the traditional tea, lemonade, and brownies. Oh, just yeah. Just like their mom yeah. did yeah. for all those years. And that was a question that I had before is, um, do they still do the brownies and tea? Absolutely, the absolutely. They they come up for 99 percent of our 250 classes for the graduation day, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we did that. And they keep the tea, lemonade, and brownies there in the house right. and bake them up. And it, it's just a pretty cool thing. Uh, it, one of the many many grand traditions yeah. that carries on here at Gunsight. Yeah. That's the the site where the Cooper's original home was, uh -huh. actually just coming up here on our left, and they had a double wide trailer mm -hmm. that they modified into a home, had a big western style porch on it while they were building the sconce. The sconce took a couple of years to build. And actually before they even had uh, the building that became the office pro shop classroom, the classes were held on the porch of that house. Ah. Uh, there's some pictures of the early classes. Um, there's a fellow named Bruce Nelson. He mm -hmm. was an instructor in class number one. Bruce was a peace officer out of California, but predominantly he was known for Bruce Nelson combat leather, oh, which yeah. is a an icon. icon. Uh, Bruce has passed away in about 92 or so. Um, his wife was president of the NRA, Sandy Froman, mm -hmm. his widow, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, she's she still comes out and takes classes. But yeah, Bruce was one of the one of the first instructors here and was an instructor in class number one, hmm. along with Jeff. Yeah. So there's a just so much neat neat history. So much history here, yeah. Ken. You know, uh, what was when was this, when did uh, Gunsight start? We're coming up on our 45th anniversary here mm -hmm. in just a couple of weeks. As far as we know, we're the oldest privately owned and operated shooting school in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, military and law enforcement have trained folks longer. Mm -hmm. Sure. But we teach earth people, yeah. we teach you. Yep. We, we keep good Americans and good people alive. And to think about that at 45 years doing what we do, and uh, that's pretty spectacular. As you can see, uh, Jeff was an avid Africa hunter. There's a lot of game heads up, up on the walls and such. Um, they built this house, uh, Adobe, exterior, um, block walls, um, and they called it the sconce. And sconce is a term meaning small fortress. Mm -hmm. And he did this based on his experiences um, in Central and South America when he did some private consulting. And he also worked for the OSS, the precursor to mm -hmm. the CIA. And so he wanted to design a house that would be a fortress that he could use as an example. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what he did here. 
this is probably the safest place on earth. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but he did it. So everything, he, coming from a marine uh, uh, background, background yeah. and then a, being on a destroyer a good part of World War II, mm -hmm. this is the main deck. Mm -hmm. There's the lower deck and the crow's nest yeah. type thing. But all of the doors and windows have a basically a gun port mm -hmm. uh, so that if you come to the front door, for instance, you're facing the front door. Well, we can look out at you and talk to you. Oh, yeah. Every door and every window in the sconce has these. So there's no blind spots. There is no blind spots whatsoever. So that's pretty neat the way he had, he had the house designed like this. Mm -hmm. There's also an escape hatch mm -hmm. built into the house. Um, one, one of the other neat things here, this is the hallway back to the, to the master bedroom. Oh. You close this barred gate. Now I gotta duck down to the end here because there's a manual rod. The yeah. gate's locked. I don't have to rely on electricity. I don't have to rely on anything. And I can stay back here mm -hmm. behind concealment and cover and address you or engage you as I need to. Right. You can't come through. So this way you've got to make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. uh, also all of the uh, windows have uh, fortifications on them yeah. uh, to keep you from coming in through that way. But it's just a simple lever system mm -hmm. that, that keeps miscreants from coming in in a home invasion. It's interesting that it's all manual as well, so exactly. we don't need the electric if the electric was out nope. or any anything was cut. And That's correct. Being you know, and you're in some kind of invasion or what have you. And think back in seventy uh, five, seventy eight, eighty, power being out out this far oh, yeah. was not uncommon. Yeah. Right. Uh, being out for some time. Good monsoon and, or electrical storm. And, exactly. Now yeah. they've had, we've got generators here and so on, but still mm -hmm. that way you didn't have to rely on that. Yeah. So he built it as, as this fortress. Uh, we'll go out on the veranda here in a minute. Yeah. We'll go up into the crow's nest. Now when we were just 162 acres from his office or the mm -hmm. crow's nest, you could see most all the ranges. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. well, even with a big good set of Steiners, yeah. uh, you're, you see the curvature of the earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely, as yeah. big as we are here. Yeah. So we'll go up there and see his office as he left it. We'll step yeah. out on the veranda and sh let you see what a beautiful view it is out there. And then, of course, we'll go down the spiral staircase into his armory and the ultimate man cave, oh, yeah. his armory. Yeah. Um, so the library and the armory are, are neat places. Now, spiral staircase, mm -hmm. a couple reasons this was put in. Besides its space saving, mm -hmm. um, it, it's very defensible. It's difficult for someone to rush up, yeah. up a stairs. Now, do you know why spiral staircases are clockwise? No, I don't. It, and I, I learned this on a trip with some high school kids in, into uh, England, Ireland, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, because everyone had to fight right-handed. So if you're going up the uh, stairs as the offender, mm -hmm. it is more difficult for you than it is for the defender. To fight left-handed. <laughs> Correct. <Yeah. laughs> See, you learn something every day yeah. at gun sight. Yeah. It doesn't matter who right. you and, are. And this goes back thousands <laughs> yeah. of years and yeah. how smart people were back then. Wow. So that's that's some thought in all this cases. stuff. It's Absolutely. Kind of, it's really... uh, you know, just a, some some neat stuff here. Um, mm. oh, this wow. was given to Colonel Cooper. Let's see. I believe it's uh, in recognition of his outstanding leadership, exceptional performances rendered in the training of the Thai police force. Uh, police General Powell, and I won't try to read the last name. This was back in the in the early 50s and this was presented and this also had to do from our understanding with some OSS duties as well. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know about that because even Mrs. Cooper up to 99 were not allowed to discuss that. It didn't accept, it didn't exist. Yeah. No, it did not. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Now Jeff, well, while we're here too, yeah. uh, Jeff would sit here and and hold court mm -hmm. and if the when you came up uh, to see Jeff and he'd be sitting in his chair and the fire would be going, he would have his pistol out and it would sit here, and we would take our pistols out and set them here and sit. Mm -hmm. And that was because it was Mrs. Cooper's rule. She didn't want those guns damaging up yeah, her damn. furniture. <laughs> yeah. And he may have been the guru, but mm -hmm. she was the countess. She, and that ruled, ruled the roost, right? That is correct. And that's interesting. I just want to go back a little bit, Ken, because you knew the Coopers. You trained under Jeff Cooper. I, I, I did. I did. I came when I came in '90. 
our campground now, we have a wonderful yeah. campground. It's beautiful. It's, it's very clean. Mm -hmm. Showers, bathrooms, laundry, facilities, all part of your camping fee. Water and electric. We don't have a dump station, but that's okay. You mm -hmm. don't need it with as great as our facilities are. But that used to be a dirt airstrip. Yeah. And uh, now with Love Field or... Uh, yeah, uh, Prescott, Prescott Airport, airport whatever yeah. it's called yeah. now. Still called Love. Love Field. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't need a dirt airport, airport so uh, airstrip, so Buzz and Sonia Mills, when the, mm -hmm. after, shortly after they purchased Gunsight, turned it into a campground. But this big raven right here was a marker for those small plane oh. pilots to verify they were at the correct dirt airstrip. Yeah. They could fly over, see the raven, uh -huh. and then know it's okay to go land. Yeah. So, How neat is that? Yeah. Air markers. Yeah. So we, we started <laughs> yeah. with a question inside a minute ago. We we're talking about some of your experience with Colonel Cooper. Oh. You've been, uh, you were actually trained by Colonel Cooper back in the days when you were a, uh, active sheriff. I, no, I wasn't sheriff then. Right. I was a dark haired deputy. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So you were a deputy and then you moved right. forward and you were uh, a sheriff in Illinois. In Indiana. Yeah. Right, Indiana. I as I worked my way through the ranks, I finished yeah. my career as, as the elected sheriff. Okay. Very proud to have held a constitutional office. Yeah, that is kind of neat, huh? It is. Because when you... The sheriffs are your last line of defense. Thank you. I'm glad that you're bringing that up because yes. you and I have talked about yeah. that before. There's yeah. roughly 3,084 sheriffs in the United States, mm -hmm. you ever take in there. And uh, we'll talk gun control in a minute mm -hmm. and because I know you yeah. have one of your topics too. You know, when you see the... Uh, mainstream media and some of those reports they'll have chiefs of police behind them from these big cities it's because that chief of police is appointed mm -hmm. that chief's job is because the mayor has said you want to be my chief okay i'll make you chief now this is what you're going to say and this is what you're going to do mm -hmm. so they they uh that's the nature of the beast the sheriff represents you the sheriff comes every four years, depending on what state, but every four years and says, this is who I am, this is what I want to do, this is how I hope to do it, if you empower me. Right. And so you, as the voter, empowers the sheriff to act. Right. So the sheriff then can go to the county fiscal body. Here it's a board of supervisors. In my old life, it was a county council, and then a, a county commissioners were board, was the executive board. But one did not was not over the other. Mm -hmm. We were on the same plane. Right. We were all held. Now, the commissioners were a... Uh, a uh, constitutional office. The council was legislatively created, and I always teased them about that. And mm -hmm. I said, "No, wait a minute. Yeah. Your your legislator created you. I'm in the I'm in the constitution." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't care for that much. But uh -huh. they, I'd been on the county council you... <laughs> before I was sheriff, so I could tease them a little. Yeah. I had a little more leeway yeah. with them. So your sheriffs are your line of defense, and that's why it's so important. You have a good, strong sheriff here mm -hmm. uh, right now. Scott Masher mm -hmm. is a tremendous sheriff. He and I had very similar career paths. We're mm -hmm. friends. I'm supposed to have lunch with him here before long. Okay. Uh, we want to help make a gun site wants to help make a contribution toward that fallen officer memorial mm -hmm. that they're putting out on the plaza yep. downtown. But uh, so we're going to have lunch again, and I'm anxious to meet again the. Yeah. who will be the incoming sheriff. But your sheriff is so important, so please, please, when you get an opportunity to vote for anybody, but especially the sheriff, sure. because he or she is your last line yeah, of defense. Right. Uh, thank you, Ken, for bringing that up, because again, I, I know we had talked about that. I can't remember if we recorded it, yeah. but yeah. that's important to know, it and is. it needs to be important for, especially this is what this show is all about, the information yes. getting out to yeah. the folks, so thanks. So, I met Jeff out here yeah. in November of 90. I came out for my 250 pistol class, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, first day in class, I'm sitting there, and my issued gun was a Smith & Wesson 645. It's a 45 mm -hmm. caliber traditional double-action pistol. Jeff called those crunching tickers. Mm -hmm. He didn't care much for double-action guns. Mm -hmm. So we're going around the room. He's polling us. What, what gun, what caliber, what gun, what caliber came to me, and Smith & Wesson 645, and he kind of scowled, that, as he was wont to okay. do, say, right caliber, wrong gun. Kind of intimidating yeah. me. So fast forward. All righty then. <laughs> yeah. Fast forward. We came down to the mm -hmm. last day of class, and we do a uh, a, a drill for score. Your mm -hmm. your your school drill, and uh, I, I shot a perfect score, and I was the only one. And I'm standing at the three yard yeah. line, and I'm waiting. And and a fellow named Dennis Tuller, if you've ever heard of the Tuller mm -hmm. drill, was the range master. And Jeff, and they're coming along, and Jeff would look at the target and point it out. And he came to mine and kind of looked at it, and he looked over at me, and he looked again at the target. And I thought, it's clean. Yeah. Everything's where it needs to be. He looks back over at me, and he looks down at my holster, and I thought, oh, here <laughs> it comes. He goes, well, 
it's the man, it's not the gun. I think we need a picture. <laughs> and if you step back into my office over in, in the gun site office, that picture hangs it's on my wall, wall today. Because yeah. Jeff and I shaking hands, with me with this big Alice in Wonderland <laughs> yeah. picture, cat grill, a grin on uh -huh. my face. So, so he was, was he was great. a fascinating man to talk to, visit with. He did not. Uh, he did not suffer fools well. Mm -hmm. He he would talk history, politics, shooting, hunting, philosophy. He he was a Renaissance man, classically mm -hmm. educated man. Coming out and talking about the weather or small talk, not not so much. Not for that. Yeah, and, yeah, and go on. Yeah. So if we step over here just a little bit too, you can see the steel is still out there. He could sit up here and he had uh, 22 targets, little pieces of white steel straight straight down to see the path. And oh he could yeah. Shoot, yeah. Yeah. He could shoot. Uh, from up here on on the uh, veranda, yeah, and then just a gorgeous Plink. view. You can yeah. see Bill Williams and as Mrs. Cooper called them. They aren't the San Francisco Peaks. Those mm -hmm. are the three sisters. Yeah, um, so you can they're behind the, the juniper there, but just a gorgeous view and. It is well, it's typical Arizona area. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it, it's just beautiful. Beautiful high desert. Yep. And uh, yep. it looks like our, our temperatures are finally going to break yeah. here in the next day or two, and yep. we're all looking forward well, to I that. I bet. I bet. So. Well, you're pretty busy even during the summer. Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter. Got, yeah, it's... it doesn't matter. We with this pandemic business, mm -hmm. uh, about March fifteenth, uh, mm -hmm. we had a lot of people cancel. They couldn't travel. Maybe they lost their jobs. Things right. like that. Laid off. And about half of them said, just keep my deposit and mm -hmm. I'll reschedule. So we had about three weeks of that, then two or three weeks of flat. And now it's unfortunate as it sounds, yeah. violence and riots have been good for our business. Yeah. And I hate to say it in yeah. a positive way, but it is good that these millions of new gun owners, you these bet. people that are recognizing, thank God, they have their Second Amendment yeah. right to be able to protect themselves. They're buying these guns. They're also getting training. Yeah. And uh, we've got a, a really big carbine class, carbine stuffs or AR-15s. Last week in our level one pistol class, that's the five day, it's called the 250 pistol. The first one filled, so we added a second one. Mm -hmm. um, the last week of September, first couple days of October, we've got a two 250 pistol classes and two 350, that's our intermediate pistol, they're all four full. Yeah. And then the end of October, I've got another double 250 and they're all full. Wow. So, and there's other classes in between, other specialty classes. So people are getting good training. And, and folks, if you're one of these people that did just go out and, and buy a new gun, God bless you for that. And, and you can get ammunition for it, but please, please don't think you own a piano makes you a musician. You are not. You've got to go get training. And there's other good training out there. Do we think we're the best? Absolutely we do. But there's other good training out there. You need to get that training because you will not rise to the occasion when that bad thing happens. You will default to your level of training. Yeah. Don't think you'll be a gamer and be able to yep. to, to deal with it. Thank you, Ken. I, uh, it's so important that new gun owners, because I talk to a lot of the shop owners in Prescott, and it's interesting that a lot of the new gun owners are female. And a lot of the new gun owners identify themselves as Democrats. Yeah. So they're seeing for and the first time. And that's an opportunity time, for us. Yeah, that, that, to bring them into the yeah. fold yeah. and understand that, you know, uh, gun ownership's a good thing. Exercising yes. your constitutional rights is a good thing. Yeah. Just go out and get the training. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and gun sites here. This uh, is, a, we tease about yeah. it, but it's good natured yeah. teasing about. Oh, you're from California, welcome yeah. to free America yeah. and such. But you know, again, folks, this is this is an opportunity to bring them from the dark side. You bet. And let them realize, gosh, we put our pants on the same way you every bet. day. Mm -hmm. And you're interested in protecting yourself and your family, and we're interested in that too. So let's talk about that and maybe sway them a little bit, at least from that part yeah. of, of what their party line is. So Words it, of wisdom. It's Very an opportunity. Good. Absolutely. So well, let's go in oh. and let's go down in the let's no. go up in the crow's nest. Okay, that sounds like a deal. This was the colonel's office. Um, if you wrote him, mm -hmm. you got letter back from him. He had a secretary that would type it up and he would sign it. I still have all my letters when I corresponded with him. Uh, they're a, a treasure to me and, and, and many of us. Sure. But uh, this is where, where he worked. Now, there's an intercom over there on the wall because pre-common radio days and so on, there was an intercom in what we call the old pro shop. Mm -hmm. And if you needed to talk to somebody here, Back to destroyer days. Yeah. Ahoy, sconce! <laughs> <laughs> so when I would bring the students over for their tours, whenever I'd come up to the back door in the garage, I'd rap on the door twice. Mm -hmm. That's a marine thing. Open the door and I'd say, Ahoy, sconce! <laughs> and it always brought a little smile to Mrs. Yeah. Cooper's face. So, I'm Anyway, fine. I used to be able to see 
almost all the ranges from up here uh -huh. or if you'd step out the door but now we're much bigger than that sure so uh -huh. but this is pretty much as he left it you know the family's taken some treasures and mementos but oh, sure. uh again this is pretty much as he left oh, it. what would that what would that mean ken do you know i'm no. sorry i do not yeah it's uh it's by uh uh, an author, a hunting author, uh, Ortega Gasset, he's one who said, uh, did you have a good day hunting? Uh -huh. Of course I did. I was hunting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, he, he wrote uh, Meditations on Hunting, mm -hmm. I believe. But, so, but I don't know what that yeah. one means. Uh, so. so this would be like the HQ yep. headquarters. Yep. That's Again, correct. this is things, folks, that nobody, no, very no. few people no, get tour, to see. the Gunsight 250 Tours. Yeah. Now, what we're hoping to be able to do... Um, when this pandemic hit, we pushed some capital projects back. Right. I was just ready to repaint all the interior mm -hmm. uh, of, of the sconce. And then uh, we're going to take the carpet out and put tile or something in just for ease of maintenance. Yeah. But I pushed that project back. But once we get that done, I'm, I'm, I've got a big screen TV I'm going to hang up downstairs because about a year before Mrs. Cooper passed, in thinking that she wouldn't be with us forever, mm -hmm. she had a script that she would talk to all the students uh -huh. with. Well, I had a professional film crew come in and record that, and we're going to show that on the big screen TV. Oh, yeah. it, a TV uh, won't do her justice. Right. So anyway, right. Uh, we hope, and then when uh, people stop in for tours, and we do a lot of tours, that mm -hmm. expensive sign that ADOT leases us out yeah. on the highway yeah. does send us a lot of business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this is where you were. I saw the sign, and, mm -hmm. and I turned down the road. And the tour of Gunsight is free, mm -hmm. but to, what we're thinking of is with the sconce, we may charge a fee, and if it's a couple, it's $20 for you, but that also includes a Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation challenge coin, mm -hmm. and it's $10 for your adult oh, guest, yeah. no coin. But all those monies go to the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation, which is a 501c3 yeah. that is run by the Cooper family, and they... Uh, uh, do scholarships hmm. so oh. that that's kind of what our plan is but that's going to be six eight going, nine months out right going now. forward yeah great ideas so let's, let's go, go down, down into the armory oh. all right and i'll follow you this was his library and and the families culled through and removed duplicate titles out but he was a voracious reader but again he was a classically educated man right and he read as you can see from the titles here everything from history to philosophy to shooting to Poetry, um, it, it, it's he, wow. he was just a, a very interesting man. Sure, so this, this was his here. library. Yeah, and then as we came in here, there at one time there was a pool table in here mm -hmm. where they would play pool. And, and again, with as we mentioned all, now this isn't a regular door obviously to the exterior, uh -huh. but even that vault door has the, oh, yeah. a gun port window. There's yeah. a gun port window down there. Uh, he, he built his, and the exterior windows are barred. Yeah. But the, again, the fun place to be is right in here. Oh. Jeff would sit over here in this corner, and as we would say, he'd hold court. He would sit here and he'd visit with the students and, and just wax on eloquently in uh. uh, talking to them, surrounded in, in, in his surroundings of his variety of guns. This, if you've never seen a Bren 10, he was involved in that project. Yeah. There's a Bren 10 right over here. It was all adorned up for them. It's, it's uh -huh. Unfortunately, that uh, company did not take off. There were all kinds of issues in there. But uh, if you were a Miami Vice fan, right. in season one, Sonny Crockett carried a Bren right. 10 in his shoulder holster. And if you can see some screenshots of that, it has a Raven Oh, wow. On the slide yeah. of Sonny Crockett's gun, there yeah. the, net, the the following years he had uh, predominantly a Smith 645, but that was pretty cool that he had that. So uh, all this, this really all this cool. memorabilia belongs to the Legacy Foundation. He was mm -hmm. also very much into edged weapons and swords. There's a replica of Pizarro's sword upstairs hanging on the wall, but that's all mm -hmm. part of the history of yeah. warfare and fighting and and uh, manhood. Right. Uh, so he uh, he collected all these. These things. All down here as well. All oh the, yes, they're they're all everywhere. The edged. And then now, yesterday we, we had a celebration. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff and Janelle Cooper, had they still be alive, would have been 100 years old in May, and we had planned an event 
uh, to celebrate their 100th birthday. It was a suggestion of a, of a former staff member, a fellow named Jack Furr. Mm -hmm. Jack and Shirley Furr still live still lived here in Prescott. Jack and, and Jack suggested we do this event and do a Cooper Memorial shoot. Jack unfortunately suddenly became ill and passed. Mm. So he couldn't be here but we, well, he was in spirit. Well we had yeah. to push it on from Memorial Day because all of the COVID business sure. going on, people weren't traveling. So we had that pistol match yesterday. We required everybody to carry a 1911 single column. Yeah. I said if it's not the gun, a gun that Jeff Cooper would have put in his holster and a holster that he would have used, right. you can't bring it. No red dot sights, no extended magazines, right. no no bells, whistles, yeah. rear view mirrors, any mm -hmm. of those things. So we had a great match and so we did the qualifiers in the morning. We took the top uh, 16 shooters and we put them into what's called a J ladder. Mm -hmm. Now this, coming, being a good Hoosier, yeah. this is like a, a double elimination high school basketball tourney is what this is. So that if you lose, if you get beat, you can fight your way back in, into the tournament. But there's some big names on here. Thel Reed, Ray Chapman, yeah. uh, Jack Weaver is up here, um, uh, John Plon. Uh, there's Weaver. This yeah. was in 1963. Yeah. And this was early on when Cooper was doing things called the called the leather slap in Big Bear uh, yeah. Lake California area. And that's where a lot of his studying and where basically where the modern technique was born. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, it's neat being down here. and It is. This and, is like, uh, like you said, this is the ultimate man cave. It's it incredible. is. Incredible. It is. And, you know, you brought that up. Originally, he started in Big Bear, California. Right. And then bought gun site here in Arizona. Right, right. They, again, 162 acres. They, mm -hmm. uh, as Mrs., I've heard Mrs. Cooper say, they were recognizing California was changing, yeah. you know, in the mid-70s. Yeah. And they needed to get out where they could, he had this vision of the shooting school, yeah. and uh, they needed to get where they had space and a good political environment and a good climate mm -hmm. and so on, and we're here. Now, yeah. and I think we talked about this last time, I, I try to make people understand we're an economic gem here in, in this community. Mm -hmm. We bring money in. Yeah. Uh, in my prior life as sheriff, I worked closely with the Economic Development Commission. And you want businesses mm -hmm. that will bring revenue but not require a lot of services. Right? A, a big apartment complex yeah. requires a lot of services, but they don't pay a whole lot in property taxes mm -hmm. necessarily. Right? So we're one of those businesses, we generate a tremendous amount of revenue and goodwill. Mm -hmm. The hotels love us. Our clients are good people. They're mm -hmm. not the party animals that come in and trash the rooms. They come in, they're tired at the end of the yeah. day. We've done our job. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and you know, the, right. the, uh, the restaurants, the, uh, the uh, gas stations, mm -hmm. the car rental agencies, the airports, um, the, the tourist yeah. location. Just the tourism itself, Ken. Exactly. Tur I'm sure nobody comes just to do their gun yeah. sight class and then say, I'm going to go back home. They spend a couple days they in They do, and, and, we, and we help them yeah. with that. We talk about um, uh, the cliff dwellers, the, mm -hmm. the Grand Canyon, yeah. uh, Charlotte Hall, uh, the, the Granite Dells, the hiking, the kayaking, all these kind of things so that if you come and maybe your family doesn't want to shoot, there's yeah. So much the, the antique shops, the how great our town square is. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the plaza! There are communities that would kill to have a vibrant plaza yeah. like Prescott has. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we're one of those businesses that really does a lot of good. Not to mention our own local payroll, right. our, our our lunch caterer. She's mm -hmm. a local lady out of Chino. She provides lunches every day. She's not my employee, yeah. Gunsight's employee. She's a contractor. So she hires people, she buys her groceries locally mm -hmm. as well, makes that food up fresh. Mm -hmm. It, you know, no, you're, Ronald you're, Reagan, you're it trickles right. down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it works. Yeah. So we're, we're one of those, bits, so we're not just here teaching people how to stay alive, mm -hmm. we're also good for the economy. Good, yeah, exactly. Good for the community as well. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And, and then, you know, we do a lot with the local law enforcement mm -hmm. too. And we're, local law enforcement is, is very, I'm saying that very generally. I spent 35 years as a cop. My son's a cop. Mm -hmm. Dave Hartman, my, my XO, he's a retired Orange County Sheriff Sergeant. Majority of our folks have got law enforcement ties. So the local law enforcement, we take care of them, whether it's yeah. DPS, Game and Fish, Yavapai County Sheriff, uh, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, Prescott, the Arizona Rangers. Yeah. Uh, they come yeah. out and, and do quite a little bit of training here because, gosh darn it, in, in law enforcement, they don't have the budgets for it. Mm -hmm. And they never get enough time. So we try to help them out because if we need them, yeah. I, I want 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, show my age. I want Hank Aaron stepping up there to the plate. <laughs> you're right. It's going to hit that long ball because that, that's what it's got to be if it comes and to that. And you're one of the largest chapters of the Well-Armed Women. We are. So, the Well-Armed yeah. Women is a great organization. I, I just did a, a video for them mm -hmm. uh, here in the last few days. Um, we've got one of the largest chapters uh, mm -hmm. in, in the state. Um, there was another, there's another chapter that's bigger now, but it's a consolidation of three other chapters. Right. But we have a waiting list to get to our chapter because I, I got to offer a quality product. Mm -hmm. So we have to limit how many people we can have. And then once, once we get the basics into them, then they can move into the advanced group. Right. And then we start over again with another basic group. Mm -hmm. But gosh, they are just a hoot. And you know, for $50 a year, the Well-Earned Women just a great organization, whether you're here, Flagstaff, uh, Chino Valley, it's just a great organization of ladies all together and the dynamic of them working together, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's spectacular. And what's really neat is you use your instructors, some yes. of the best instructors in the business, bar none. Yes. And they're out there volunteering yes. their time oh, yeah, absolutely. to do this yeah. for, the, for our community and our ladies. And when when well our learned. instructors are teaching well-earned women, they're, they're not on the clock, I'm not writing them a check. They're here and they're giving up half day. I've got one instructor that uh, Jerry McCowan's our senior senior range master. Um, he drives up from the valley mm -hmm. just to teach them. He drives up that Saturday morning, yeah. teaches them till about noon, and then has lunch and drives back down wow. to the valley again. Yeah. But that just shows the quality and, and integrity of, of the great gunsight folks we've got. The couldn't, staff couldn't agree more, Ken. No. You bet. Well, this is cool. I, again, I just. Uh, I'm sure Rob wants to take more video, but I'm just going to check this out. While you just I have do. The you make yourself at home. Absolutely. And remember, I'll be just patting. For, I'll be patting yeah. it down when when, yeah, you, when you get outside. I'll that be door. patted down as we go. But this is uh, <laughs> this is so uh, what it's such a great opportunity. Yes, uh, that's it's an yeah. old uh, Crag, yeah. yeah. And there's uh, one of the early versions of the Scout rifle that he helped design with Steyer. Oh, here you go. So He's, I own a Ruger Scout. Yeah, and. That's that's one of the prototypes, that, right? And that's one of Jeff's. Uh, uh, the Scout rifle is is Jeff's design, and then some of the early Scouts are up here on the wall. Yeah, I always thought it was weird when I bought it. It was like that forward, forward scope. It's odd to you. Yeah, get used it's it. kind of weird to, to originally, but yeah. you get used to it. You do, it, it, and it's, it's fast. I mean, oh, it you is. bring it up, and it, it's sort of like putting a red dot on your on your carbine. Right. And when you first had it up there, I thought, what is that? Yeah. And now. Now, the, of course, it's red dots on pistols. Yeah. And we even offer a separate pistol class for that now. Yeah. Uh, 250 red dot and 350 red dot. Uh, we teach it in the normal pistol classes, but this is solely uh, guns with red dots. And, and mm. it's, it's what's happening. What, red dots on pistols are where we were with carbines 20 years ago. Yeah. What, what's yeah. that newfangled uh, mm. uh, juice can you got there on top of your carbine? Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> now we know. A tanker's model of the uh, M1 Grand. Yes. That's, those are unique as well. Shorter barrel. Love the walnut on that one. Yeah. I remember with those boxes one time, at one time. I'm, I hate to date myself as well, yeah. but you oh, know yeah. what? I've, Super I Bell I, and... Yeah. yeah. I think I have a few of those boxes still <laughs> in my gun safe. <laughs> I had one of these, and this is a sickening story. I had the, the original... Mini 14 on the side it was stamped, made in, in the year 17, or I'm sorry, 1976, in American Freedom, and it broke a, uh, the extractor on it. So I sent it back to Ruger, and they said, well, we don't make this style anymore, but what we can do is if you send your fire, we'll keep, we'll keep your firearm, and we'll send you a brand new one. They replaced it. It was yeah. really cool. But it didn't have the wooden right. top stock. Yeah. It didn't have the imprint that, you know, made in America Freedom in 1976. So I, I still, I just think about, man, did I screw up on that deal. You know, Ruger's a good, talking about good industries. Yeah. You know, Ruger's a good one here yeah. in Prescott, hiring folks. They come out regularly. They make use of our ranges yeah. uh, to test different products. Uh, it's Ruger's a great company. And again, here in Prescott, I had a uh, 1911, and I had a couple stove types on it. And I took it over to the Ruger company. In three days, they had it completely corrected. Yeah. And here's the neat thing, Ken. They even cleaned my gun for me when I returned <laughs> it. So it's like they test fired it, they fixed it, they test and fired it, it, and they cleaned it. So That's a deal. Where in the world can you go for that, yeah, right? That's and a deal. again, it was all covered under the Ruger uh, warranty. Warranty, yeah. 
So the fireplace has all the grand the kids and the grandkids. Grand and the grandkids, yeah. So L Lindy is one of the daughters. Uh, Perry's a daughter. Amy is Perry's daughter. So she was the first granddaughter. And then Christy, uh, Victoria, Vicky is Christy's daughter. And then Tess follows there and Tyler. So mm -hmm. everybody's everybody's present. Everybody's listed along in there. Yeah, very cool. Well, Ken, thank you again so much for inviting us out here and walking through the sconch and showing us all the memorabilia and so much history. In that it, it is incredible. It really, is. and I've never been in there, but I got to tell you, I'm I'm awed and I'm wowed. Good. And Good. Uh, I, again, I just want to say thank you so oh. much and thank you to Gunsight oh. I'm glad you for for here. doing here. Hey, yeah. Let me let me bring up two other things. You'll take a point of personal privilege. You bet. As, as Absolutely. CEO, right. Two two things in here. You know, folks are concerned about taking training and finding ammunition because ammunition is is a commodity right mm -hmm. now well this is gun sight we don't take advantage of folks if you sign up to take a class and we say it takes a thousand rounds we have an ammo package available for that class and we haven't we haven't increased our prices any it we're, we're not going to do that to yeah. people um, and our vendors, Remington and Double Tap, have not increased our ammo prices. Mm. And we try to keep a year's worth of inventory in mm. stock. So I've got 2021 mm. ammo, and I just ordered 2022 ammo, not knowing what's going to happen. Right. I want to make sure I have that. But folks, if you're concerned about not having ammunition to take a class, whether it's a CCW class or a five-day 250, you sign up, you sign up for the ammo package, it's fairly priced, and we'll have ammo for you. Now, don't try to come in on Thursday and say, oh, by the way, I'm running low on ammo. Yeah. I need another 500 rounds. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> and then let me talk about somebody with the flag over our shoulder here. It's really appropriate. Um, we lost one of our longtime staff members uh, just last week, Major Bill Mon. Uh, Bill uh, worked out here for decades. He was a three-war United States Marine. He enlisted at 16, served in World War II. He uh, went ashore at Incheon uh, in Korea and then walked out as part of the Frozen Chosen, and then he served in Vietnam. After he got out of the Marine Corps, now that would be enough for, uh, for, no, for many yeah, men, yeah. but Bill was a cowboy too, but he ended up being a police officer, a peace officer here in Arizona for 28 years, served as a chief of three different agencies, was involved in counter-narcotics organizations. Um, he was one of the first Caucasians mm -hmm. to run a dojo yeah. in occupied Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll tell you, so ironically, the day he passed was the same day he went ashore with occupied forces wow. the day after VJ Day. Yeah. Same day he passed. And I'm sure um, he was much more welcomed at the Heavenly Gate than he was sure. coming ashore in Japan on that day. Um, he worked here for many years uh, as an instructor, and he, he mentored many of us as young, dark-haired instructors, and we're certainly going to miss Bill. Yeah. Uh, so please keep he and his family in your thoughts Absolutely. and prayers. Thank you, was, Bill, for your he service. Was, he was an American. Yep. And thank you and his family as well. Yes. So, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we get older. That's one of the worst things that happened to our, to us is we see a lot of our heroes yes. and a lot of our, our people go before us. And, absolutely do. Yeah. But, you know, when you look up here at these yeah. marshmallow clouds, that impossibly blue sky, we know Bill's up there looking mm -hmm. down at you us. You betcha. Thanks, so, Ken. Oh, Thanks thank again. You. Hey. And, hey, Ken, I got a question for you. Yeah. When are you coming to Gunsight? <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> hey, Prescott, thanks again. As always, I like to say thank you to our current serving and prior uh, military. Thank you for giving us the freedom that we can stand out here and, and enjoy the, our, our freedoms and our Second Amendment. Without that, we would truly be lost. Thank you for our law enforcement and thank you for our firefighters and Ken. Special thank you for your service. Yep. You're a sheriff and we appreciate your service. Thank as you. Well. There's tremendous great guys and gals out there. Don't believe what a lot of this mainstream media stuff saying about how bad these cops are. There are you tens bet. of thousands of great law enforcement folks out there that you never hear about because they're doing a great job each and every day. And I think the people that watch this show I think they know understand that. that. You Indeed. bet. Thank you right, again. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Prescott.